Welcome to the Pharos Fit Podcast, where we help you to explore your capacity to move better, push further, and achieve your limitless potential through fitness, nutrition, recovery, and lifestyle. Hey guys, welcome back to the Pharos Fit Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm here today with Brandon, my producer. Brandon, how you doing? Doing great. Can't complain. All is well. Good. Literally, I'm serious about this. <laughs> you're not faking it. No, no, not faking it like the whole pandemic. This, yeah, you're good. We're back. <laughs> That's good to hear. Uh, today, guys, I wanted to talk to you guys about coaching. Uh, I think this is going to be a, a useful podcast for any new coaches out there or any coaches that are looking to improve their game somewhat. Um, obviously, I've been coaching for a long time uh, and I've, I've seen a lot of coaches over the years. I've been in the company of some great coaches. I've been in the company of some not great coaches. Uh, I've learned a lot from some coaches. Uh, I've learned uh, what not to do from some other coaches. Um, I've seen mistakes made. Um, I've seen great things achieved. I've seen great connections made. Um, and I wanted to, 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 to go over some of those things, uh, some things that I've learned, some things I've picked up, and things, some things that may be helpful to you. Um, Brandon's gonna, gonna ho- hopefully throw in some, some questions for me as I, as I go. Um, and I really want this to be uh, a useful, helpful uh, podcast for you guys out there. Um, the first thing I want to kind of uh, bring up is, and this podcast is really specifically as it uh, pertains to group training. So if you are in control of a group class and you know you have maybe between 10 and 25 people in front of you, um, how, do you, you know, how do you deal with that situation? Um, it's something obviously we do a lot of here at Ferris uh, Echo Park. We have a lot of, a lot of classes that have you know, 20 people in uh, across multiple, multiple different types of workouts, whether it's a strength workout, whether it's a cardiovascular based workout, uh, whatever it may be. We do have to deal with that situation uh, and not just deal with it. We have to make it very uh, effective. Uh, we have to make it uh, entertaining. We have to make it fun. We have to make it safe. Um, all of these things are going to come into play. Um, so yeah, like I said, this podcast is really going to be toward that, that group dynamic, like how do you control a a group session? And the first thing I want to kind of bring up is that you really lose in control the respect of the class within the first minute or two. Um, You know, if you go into a session, you know, full of doubt and apprehension and like, I'm not really sure what I'm doing kind of thing, you immediately lose respect of the people in in front of you. Um, So it's very important that you start off the session as you mean to go on in command of the people around you. Um, sometimes that can be intimidating. Uh, sometimes, you know, there might be people in that class who are a lot fitter than you are. There might be people in that class that are a lot more experienced than you are. Um, whatever the situation may be, you have to go in there with your with your general hat on. You are, you are the boss, you are in control, and you have to make them uh, respect you. And you have to make sure that they know that. They have, you have to make sure that they know that you're in control. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're a, a, a five-foot uh, female or a seven-foot male or whatever it may be. Um, the, the position is the same. You're in charge and you have to let them know that. Now, that's easier for some of us than others. Some, some of us have naturally bigger voices and can, you know, it's easier for us to, to gain command. Some of us are a bigger physical presence, which can sometimes help. Um, but we have to find ways as, as coaches to, fa- to find our coaching voice and with that coaching voice, create the, the respect and the attention that you need from your class. Does that make sense, Brandon? Absolutely. I mean, I'm a short white guy and I've coached basketball all around the world. Right. Like stepping into the space and commanding respect as well as, again, you're looking at kids that may be way more athletic than you were ever were or even adults you train. And how do you get that respectability as well as kind of being three steps ahead to communicate and relay something they don't know and something they need to learn. And then you kind of got to be on that uh, ledge ahead of them or else like you said, that communication barrier, yeah, it's stuck. And what I find a lot of the time, it's say what you're saying with conviction. It doesn't matter how simple it is. If you say it with conviction, mm-hmm. it's a lot more believable. So let's say I'm doing three by five wall squats, two by 10 squat, and three by 15 kettlebell swing. If I say to the crowd, we're gonna do, um, well, we're gonna do three by five wall squat, and then we're gonna do 10 goblet squats, and then I guess we'll do 15 kettlebell swings. 
you've immediately lost everybody. It's okay, here's what's happening. We're doing five all squats, 10 goblet squats, and 15 kettlebell swings. This is how I want it done, this is how it looks, and then go into your demos. It's direct, it's, it's, you don't have to be a sergeant major, it's not like military, but mm -hmm. it's clear, it's concise, and you have some sense of authority in your voice. It's not like a wishy-washy, doubtful, kind of like moseying into the class kind of situation. It's like, the class has started, I'm here, listen to me, this is what's happening. I'm sure for you guys in fitness, it's like, hey, this is the 6 a.m. class. I have to really bring it. Everybody's right. counting on me to be awake, alert, and kind of kick them in the ass to yeah. get a jump start for their yeah. day. Yeah, well, well, we'll go into this, this more in a, in, a, in a second, but it's a really important point because as a coach, that you, you have so many roles to play. You have to be the motivator. You have to be the educator. Mm -hmm. You have to be the friend. You have to be someone they can rely on and trust, but you also have to be someone who's going to push them harder than they potentially want to go. Um, there's all these different things that come into play as a coach that that that, that is is asked of you. That is you know that is what is required of you. You have to put on multiple hats um, to be the best coach you can be. Um, you have to have different voices for different people. Um, some people are going to need a bit of a softer touch. If you just shout them down, they're not going to respond. Oh, yeah. Some people need to be have a harder voice with um and that's just the way it is you have to be adaptable to other people's you know personalities you have to be malleable you have to you have to acknowledge and, and know when to approach one person with one voice and another person with another voice and how to generally you know create the atmosphere of the class you know you don't want to be annoying as a coach you don't want to be someone that people are like dude shut the hell up um but at the same time you know, A, you're on the clock, so you've got to keep the class going. You've got to keep it keep it moving. B, you want to be very clear about what you want because you want people to be safe and you want to be uh, making sure that the, the exercises are done in the way they should be done and that people understand the workout. Um, so there are all these different things that, as a coach, you have to be aware of. And it's not an easy it's not an easy job to be a great coach. It's, it's a no. very, very hard... I mean, being a great coach, I think, takes, takes years of experience and education and... It takes mistakes, it takes learning from those mistakes, and it takes a lot of growth. Um, but the, the, the ones that do it well, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a crazy and amazing thing to see. Um, so that, that kind of brings us to our next point, which is, which is being prepared. Um, know exactly what the workout is, how you're gonna organize the room, uh, and scaling options, etc. You'll be amazed how many people I've seen over the years that Come into, a come into a class not even knowing what the workout is until they're in the class. And they look up at the board and they go, oh, so today we're doing, it's unacceptable. You have to know what you're doing before you go into it. Know exactly back to front what the class is, what the warm-up is, what the main workout is, what the finisher is, what the accessory pieces are. Know everything back to back. Know how you're gonna coach it. You should visualize the room in front of you. You know, you should visualize how that room looks. Are there benches? Are there barbells? Are there dumbbells? What direction is everybody facing? How are you going to lay out the room? Um, what's the best position to teach from? Are you are you visible to your audience? Mm -hmm. um, how are you going to how are you going to maintain command um, and keep things rolling in the in the best way possible um, relative to the workout, the specific workout that's happening today? What's the best way to organize that workout? And you have to go in, you know, with a plan. Absolutely. That was like the biggest thing for me as a player that I took into coaching, that manifestation and visualization right. of like walking through, okay, if we're going to be doing this exercise and this drill, how is it going to relate? But also I got to plan in a 55 minute workout and how do I make sure if I got four or five kids or four or five adults, they're getting their money's worth. We're getting a good, efficient, optimal workout or training session in this, yeah. knowing your audience as well. So, I mean, what do you, what do you do in terms of like planning and preparation when you're like trying to... It's, it's exactly that. It's, it's visualization before the class. You're, you're, you're thinking about the workout before you even get there. You're visualizing like, okay, where are you going to be in the room? How are the people going to be set out? What do they need in the workout? How are they going to perform it? Obviously right now, you know, since the whole COVID thing, everyone's in their box. So how, what does that box look like today? What do they need in their box? Um, how are they going to organize their stations? And how is the workout going to flow? Like if you start a workout, if you start coaching a session not really knowing what's happening next, you very quickly kind of fall behind and start like fumbling through the workout. You fall behind in time. People in the class don't really know what they're doing. Um, it becomes a mess. People are coming up and asking you questions when the workouts are already started. You know, it's a very, it, you, things fall apart very quickly. The wheels fall off very quickly if you're not prepared. Mm -hmm. It always go back to the old, the old 
Boy Scout motto of be prepared. Like you have to be prepared for you know for everything that you do in life. But specifically when you're in charge of 25 people, it's a hard workout. There's a lot of moving pieces. Anybody that knows how I program knows I program a lot. And now there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of things that need to get taught. Um, so you have to be very like, okay, this is happening, then this is happening, this is this happening, has to flow, has to move, have to fit it in the timeline, have to be a great coach, have to make sure everyone's safe. There's a lot of moving parts. And the only way that that happens successfully is if you are prepared for the session and you know exactly how it's gonna go down. Yeah, I mean, as a member and then just also as a fellow coach, like, you know, I love, love what you guys do. You know, like I said, there's so many little pieces and things that I've learned just to be a better coach. Yeah. You know, when I coach people, train people, it's like, oh man, the communication blended in with the way everything is structured and built. I mean, you know, well, you appreciate it as a... Yeah, and as here's a, the other thing. You have a, a much better time as a coach when you're prepared because you can just relax. You know exactly what's going to happen. So then you're like, I know what's happening. I'm totally chill, totally relaxed. I'm going to have a great time. And then when you have a great time, they have a great time. Um, one of my coaches, Alex, um, he does the morning crew and you walk into that station and it's a party and it's a party because they trust him 100%. He's organized. He knows his stuff. Um, everyone has such a great time because they feel completely comfortable in that situation. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a safe space for everybody because everyone knows they're going to get a great workout. Nobody's going to get hurt. Everyone's going to have a great time. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody trusts everybody. Everybody talks to everybody. It's a, it's a, it's a social thing. It's a community. Um, everyone's bouncing off each other, bouncing off each other's energy. And energy is a great word. Like as a coach, you have to be able to create great energy. And someone like Alex can do that because it's his, it's his personality. Mm -hmm. But it's created because everyone in that class is relaxed. They know they're in good hands, so they just have a good time. Shout out to and Coach Walker right there. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a super important thing. And uh, yeah, my hats off to all those coaches that they're able to do it. It's it's a real it's a real gift. Um, next one I wanted to bring up was, don't worry about the rock stars. They'll be just fine. Focus on the beginners. Now I've seen this over the years. Um, you know, you you're coaching a class. You got a couple of people in class that are really fit or really strong, and they're putting up some impressive numbers and lifting some big weights. And you're like tempted to like you know, have conversations with them or see what they're doing or talk to them. It's like, they don't need your help. They'll be just fine. Maybe they need spotting or whatever if, if they're going for some big lifts. But for the most part, your focus as a coach should be on the people that need your help the most. And the people that need your help the most are the beginners. The people that are the first timers, the third timers, or they've only been at the gym a couple of weeks. They're still trying to find their feet. Both from a technical standpoint of they need to be able to understand the exercises better. They may need more demonstration. They may, may need more coaching on those movements. And also from a, a feeling of belonging. They feel that they need to belong there. So you need to spend some extra time making them know that they belong there. If you if you start that class, if it's let's say it's someone that's their first time at the gym, you start that class, you don't know their name and you don't address them during the class, they're gonna lead that class with no association to, association to the gym whatsoever and feeling like they were ignored. Um, so it's, it's, it's super important to, to, to know who the new people are, know their names, make them feel connected, make them feel like they belong um, because the chance of them coming back if that happens is a lot greater than if, if, you, if you don't do that. You know, if someone, like I said, if someone comes in, they don't get addressed, they don't get spoken to, they, they, they feel like they were ignored for the session, they're just gonna leave yeah. and go somewhere else because everybody wants to feel like they belong and they're in the right place. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, one of the things we, we emphasize at, at First Athletic Club is, is of course the community, of course the, the kind of like, everybody belongs here, you're in good hands, we will take care of you um, and you're in good company. So you have to bring people into that company. Um, over the years that you know there have been a couple of people that have been well i never really felt like i belonged or i never really felt like i was in the in crowd or whatever it was and that's always been a really like always hit us hard so when someone says that to us it's like oh my god how did this happen like this is one of the things we pride ourselves on yeah so if that does happen it's a real like like stinger for us so it's super important that you know as coaches 
Um, we, we're really aware of everybody and every, every, that everybody feels uh, included. We, we have this word, of course, inclusive, making sure, ev- making sure we are an inclusive gym, inclusive of everybody, whether it's you know, a complete beginner or a really experienced, we have a couple of NFL players here, really experienced like NFL guy, whoever it is, um, that they feel included, they feel safe, and they feel like they're getting the attention that they need. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, people come for the community. They're looking for it, and then they stay because, I mean, I love your guys' culture here. Yeah. You know, that inclusivity, yeah. the hard work, and that place that all these different people come together to just get a good work at it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of people join the gym because it's a great facility. It has great equipment and great classes and stuff, but people stay really for the, for the community. They, 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 they achieve growth with that community. They build friendships, they build bonds, they build, like I said, trust. Um, you see the same people at the 6 a.m., the 7.15, the 8.30 every single day. They, they know the people in that class and they're always coming back to the same crowd. And there's a, there's a, there's a famili- familiarity with that. There's a social congregation with that. It's a really powerful thing, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think the closest thing to it is, is church, really. You know, when people, when you talk about building, you know, communities like that and 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 fellowship like that um it's a really powerful uh, kind of magical thing um the you know the the joy of just spending an hour of quality time with people that you like and who are who and who are on a common quest is really is really fantastic it's one of the greatest things uh, about owning a gym actually when you come in and see that absolutely um, everybody's suffering together yeah of their own created suffering but you know to make them better to make them stronger like you said doing it together like we don't get that much stuff like that outside these doors here yeah I mean, what i often do now because i don't teach the 6 a.m's anymore i like to come in at 6 a.m and i like to walk the gym i like to walk around the rooms i like to say hello to everybody I like to just like see that congregation happening. I like to say good morning to the coaches. I like to just just kind of immerse myself in the community and just like uh, greet everybody and see the smiles on people's faces and see just ask them if they're doing okay and, and see that they're, that they're experiencing some kind of joy, you know. And uh, you know, like I said, as an owner, that's that's just one of the most rewarding things I think about about having a gym is, is really seeing that. Um, seeing everything that you kind of wanted to come to fruition in that way Mm -hmm. because like i said fitness is great and i love fitness and strength is great and i love strength but what i really love is building communities i really love bringing people together and doing awesome things (laughs) as a community um so when i get to see that and when i get to experience it that's kind of like it's almost like my favorite part of the day right now is Mm -hmm. coming in early seeing everybody saying hello to everybody and just you're really getting that energy from them it's it's um beautiful it's a wonderful thing yeah it's a beautiful thing uh next point i wanted to bring up uh don't assume anybody knows anything explain demonstrate and be clear about you what you want um it's very easy you know say you've been coaching for six months it's very easy to like read out a workout like i said at the beginning of okay so we're going to do three by five wall squat uh two by ten goblet squat and f- uh, three by fifteen uh, kettlebell swings three two one go and then a couple of people in the class look at each other and like what? You can't assume that anybody knows what an air squat is. There may be people in that class that don't know, or there may be people in the class that think they know, but they don't know because they haven't never done it properly before. So no matter like what stage you are as a coach, you always have to go back to the basics. Always demonstrate everything. Always make sure everybody knows exactly what the movements are, exactly how to do it, exactly what not to do, mm-hmm. uh, what it looks like. Um, you know, make it a visual thing, make it clear. Again, speak clearly to your audience, make sure they comprehend what you're asking of them uh, before you say three to one go, right? If you say three to one go and everyone looks at each other like, what the fuck, you've done a bad job. So make sure, again, everybody knows exactly what's happening and exactly how to do everything before you start. Now, that's not to say they're gonna do it perfectly first time off. Then you're gonna have to go around and say, okay, looks good, but now try this. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I, I think it's 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 an easy trap to fall into that you assume people know what to do and you assume people know what you're talking about. Um, they don't know. Assume that they don't know. Assume that you need to teach them, um, and always go over <coughs> the basics every single time. Well, I think the important thing you said too is also demonstrate what not to do the right. wrong way because it's kind of like that accountability as a coach to say, hey, 
Here's what we want you to do. Here's what you don't want to do. Because again, not everybody's going to get it right the first time, but how do we keep them in the window in the direction? Because like you said, you got 25 other moving pieces in that class, right. people to be at that level that you can start moving on in the more positive direction after that. Yeah, but it's also like um, we go back to the, the original point of, of being prepared because at the same time, you can't spend 10 minutes teaching an air squat. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to teach an air squat in 10 seconds. Like this is how you do it. Feet go here, hips go here. This is the movement pattern. This is what you need to think about. This is what you don't need to do. Then you go. Um, if you, if you didn't know that was coming up in the workout, if you didn't know a certain movement was coming up and you weren't prepared for it, and you're, you're standing there thinking about how you're gonna teach it, um, you're wasting time, uh, people are gonna get frustrated. Um, so you gotta, like I said, be prepared, know what you're doing, and then once you are prepared, don't assume that they know anything. Like, be the coach, be the coach. <laughs> um, okay, next point. Uh, meet them where they are at. Find a language and a tone that uh, that will that they will respond to. I kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier, um, but you have to meet everybody where they are at in their training career. Like I said, some people are new to the gym, new to the experience. There may be a certain amount of intimidation walking into the gym. We all forget once we've been doing this for a long time how it felt to first walk walk into a gym space where you don't know anybody and nobody knows you, and there's a bunch of bunch of big dudes throwing some weights around or whatever it may be it can be intimidating for people you know even if i were to work uh, if i were to walk into a gym that i that i wasn't familiar with in another city um, and there you know a bunch of guys throwing weight around and it was just like it was super aggressive or whatever whatever the the atmosphere may be you know i'm going to feel a certain amount of intimidation in that in that situation so you have to take it upon yourself as a coach to meet that person where they're at and really think about okay how can I approach this person in a way that is gonna be suitable for the situation? Um, what's gonna give me the best opportunity to coach? You know, what language am I gonna use? What angles am I gonna use? Um, how close am I gonna to get to this person? Um, how loud is my voice gonna be? How soft is my voice gonna be? Um, there's all these things that come into play um, that you can use as a coaching tool for different people. Um, so many different, there's so many different personalities in the gym, obviously, um, and it's really important that you find common ground with people and uh, find a ground that they are going to respond to. Um, there's nothing worse than someone just, you know, deciding, okay, this person makes me feel uncomfortable. I'm not coming back to this class. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's it's a skill and it's an art and it's something, you know. It, you get better with it over time, I think. Um, but just know that you know some people need a softer edge, some people need a harder edge, some people need more coaching cues, some people need less coaching cues. Um, some people are going to be annoyed if you keep like pestering them with like coaching points and tips and so forth. Some people like that and they need more of it. So it really is, you know, there's no same answer for every different person. Everybody needs to be coached in a, in a different way almost, and mm -hmm. you have to find the way to coach that that person. Do you do a lot of reflection like after work <laughs> every day on like, how did I approach that? Did I come 100%, to it? Yeah, yeah and, and I, I think everyone should after every session, like how, how could I have done that part better? Did that work? How was the energy today? Um, did things fall flat? Um, did everybody perform in the way that I wanted them to perform? Did the movement patterns go well? Um, I think it's, it's a very valuable thing to be, be reflective. I, I think a lot of lo co coaches that that teach three classes back to back, whatever it is, you know, their last class is often the best class because they almost improve with every session. Like, okay, if I do it this way, it's gonna be better. This way, it's gonna be better. This way, it's gonna be better. And by the, by the last class of the day, it's, it's spot on. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it takes a little, a little bit of work. Um, you know, and sometimes it's hard as a coach, you know, if someone else is programming. So let's say I'm programming for a class and you're the coach of my programming and you know i've programmed in a, in a way um in the way that I, I think it should go down and they start and think you know there's a lot here how am i going to get how am i going to fit this in do i need to be quicker with my coaching drills that kind of thing and sometimes it takes a little bit of time to figure it out often alex will say to me like when i come in first thing this was a little long this was a little short and we'll, we'll, we'll maybe like change a couple of things mm -hmm. um, and like he'll learn from that process as, as, as they go. So it's not like 
when I say be prepared, it's not like everything is completely set in stone as to how it has to go down. It's just like you have to be aware. You have to be aware of what, what the workout looks like, what problems you may actually have, and how you could potentially fix those problems if they come up. So it's just being, you know, kind of on the ball mm -hmm. with the situation. No, I'm a massive fan of feedback myself. So just kind of like when I get the opportunity to throw stuff out there and, you know, get to know coming back what was good, what was bad, how to improve. Like, I think that's one thing that we can just do more as a people. Just like, yeah, hey, well, take I, it in without I'll taking you, it personal. Yeah, I'll give you a good example. So we've been, when we first opened the gym, you know, you kind of think you write programs and you kind of think, well, people will probably come like, maybe four or five days a week and they'll take a couple of rest days and stuff. But the thing here is people get so into it. People are training like seven days a week. So when you have a crowd that are that enthusiastic and that into it, there comes a point where you're like, okay, I'm gonna need to start programming recovery days, recovery sessions, sessions that are no longer gonna, you know, t they're no longer gonna apply stress, they're gonna reduce stress, they're no longer gonna, uh, no longer going to tax the body too much. They're mm -hmm. going to start putting money back in the bank. So for this next cycle, I'm going to start program programming recovery days on a Thursday, and and it's it's still going to be fun. It's still going to be you know a, a, a session where we move a lot, um, but it will be there will be a band of distractions in there. There will be some a lot of core work. There'll be a lot of kind of stretching, uh, smashing, mashing, foam rollering. You know all of these all of these things that make us better as athletes it's not you know it's not deadlifts and squats it's not the same stimulus it's a different stimulus but like i said when you have people that are turning up seven days a week there has to be a moment when you're like okay i need to give these people what they need rather than what they want mm -hmm. so everybody wants to be able to go hard all the time and do like you know do the fun stuff but in order to keep everybody safe and everybody healthy long term, we have to start focusing more on the recovery practices. Now, as you know, we have specific recovery programs here, but I, the problem is people get so into the program that they're on, they don't wanna miss a day, so they just keep coming back for more and more and more. Um, and there's a point where I'm like, okay, if you wanna keep coming back for more and more and more, I'm gonna make you do this shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make you do a recovery <laughs> day. Um, and I'm gonna make myself do it as well, so it's like, you know, I'm, I'm in this with you. Like if we're gonna work out this way and we wanna be this consistent and we wanna work this hard, then let's give, it, let's give our recovery the respect it deserves. And like I said, I'm gonna design it in a way that it's gonna be fun, it's gonna keep the class moving. People are still gonna get a lot out of it. There's gonna be some steady state cardio in there, like a, some steady state cardio, there's gonna be some stretching, some band distractions, some, some smashing, some foam rolling, all that kind of stuff. It's gonna be put together in kind of like a circuit thing, kind mm -hmm. of like an EMOM thing, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be entertaining, it's gonna be fun, but it's gonna be super effective and super helpful for keeping keeping people healthy long term. Yeah, longevity um, is the name of the game. And from a guy who competes at a high level, I've competed at a high level, it's like you have to squeeze that stuff in yeah, in a way yeah. that and fits that, in. And that all comes from, you know, that all comes from feedback, like feedback from coaches, feedback from, from clients, feedback from people, and feedback from my own body. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. we wanna go down this road, like we have to be honest with ourselves and say, we are not doing enough recovery, we are not doing enough repair. So let's make ourselves do it. Let's find a way to make ourselves do it. And the way to do that is to put it in the programming for that class. Okay, here's what's happening today. This is what's happening. <laughs> and um, so hopefully people, people will like it. Like I said, it's based, on, it's, based on, it's based on feedback. It's based on you know, my respect for their dedication and their commitment to the program. Um, and I want to keep people uh, as healthy and safe as I can for as long as possible. So, so that's going to be in there. So yeah, um, meet people where they're at, where they're at. Be prepared to to to, to receive feedback. Uh, change, change things. Change your person. You can't change your personality per se, but change the way you present yourself. Change your voice. Change your coaching voice. Change the way you demonstrate. Change your position in the class. Change the volume of your voice, either up or down. All these things you can change that will will help make you a better coach to specific people. Um, okay, next one. This is a great one. Uh, no one cares about how fit you are. The only thing that matters is how you can help them. Um, this is kind of a classic thing, um, and I'm sure you've all known these people over the years. It's very easy to be 
a very fit, very strong person and rely on that as your, you know, your coaching authority. Well, I'm a great coach because I'm a great athlete. Eh, doesn't work that way. Um, great athletes do not necessarily make great coaches. Um, it doesn't matter to the person in front of you that you can do Fran in sub three minutes or whatever it is. Um, that does not help them. The only thing that matters is your relationship with them, what you're doing with them today, how you're speaking to them, how you're guiding them, how you're educating them and making them feel comfortable. Um, don't rely on you know, being a great athlete, you know, pursue being a better coach. Um, ultimately, you will get a lot further as a coach if you focus on helping them than if you focus on making yourself a better athlete. Sure, like everybody likes inspiration. Everybody likes, everybody wants to believe that you're fit, that you practice what you preach. And I believe you should practice what mm -hmm. you preach, both in terms of nutrition and, and exercise. Um, but there's a point where your own athleticism can get in the way of your coaching. If you're focusing too much on that and relying on that as your, as your crux, like, you know, yeah, I probably didn't coach very well, but I can do, you know, I can, I can deadlift 600 pounds. It's like, well, nobody really cares apart from you. Um, so don't lose, don't lose sight of the fact that you are there to coach and, and you are there to help people. Um, like I said, everybody wants to be a great athlete. Um, there's a, there, there is, of course, a, a great purpose in your, your pursuit of athleticism and, and getting fitter and getting stronger. It has huge value. Um, and it's great to be an inspiration to the members um, and to your community. Um, but at the same time, like I said, what, the main thing is how you can help the person in front of you on, on the day. That's what really matters. Well, yeah, you guys mantra. What is it? Uh, great people make great coaches. Is this, right, yeah. right. Yeah, it's like it's it's a lot easier to make a, a great coach out of a great person than to make a great person out of a great coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we often hear we find great people with great potential in the community and then turn them into great coaches or, you know, they'll come to us and say, I'm thinking about coaching and then we'll nurture that. Um, Whereas I, I'm not necessarily gonna like see a great athlete and think, you know what, this person should really be a great coach. <laughs> it does, just doesn't translate in that way. Coaching is a very different thing from, from performing. Um, and it's surprising sometimes, like a lot of athletes, a lot of people that perform at a high level are just great because they're genetically great and they can do amazing things. They don't necessarily know why they can do it or how they can do it uh, and they can't, teach other people how they can do it um, they can just do it um, and they don't a lot of it you know being an exceptionally high level athlete like at the top level is an incredibly selfish career because it has to be if you want to be the best at what you do and you want to be a high performing athlete a degree of selfishness has to come with that because mm -hmm. you don't have do not have the time to dedicate to other people's pursuits um, coaching is a different thing your whole life is about helping other people it's no longer about yourself, it's about other people. So it's a completely different emphasis. It's, it's, a, it's an upside down situation. Um, so, you know, I, I say to everybody, like at a certain point, you have to decide whether you want to be a great athlete or a, or a great coach. Like, um, that's not to say you can't be a great athlete and a great coach, but there's a point where if you put too much attention on one thing, it will detract from the other. So you have to make the decision about where you want to put your energy. No, that's totally true. That split where it's just like you're done being a player. You're done pushing yourself and all this stuff. It's like, how do you separate that? And I mean, I think that's hard for anybody who's competed at such a high level, you know, whether yeah. they played the sport themselves, I can say it was for me. Like, okay, you're done. Like, yeah, take it's a actually, break and focus actually, on this. It's actually interesting that um, I always think about soccer because obviously I grew up with, with football, English mm -hmm. football, soccer. And... Um, you know, so many great soccer players over the years try to become managers and so few are successful at it. Even though they know the game inside out, like they played it since they were a kid, they were great at it, they have a lot of skill and they can do so much in the game. But when it comes to being the coach, it's a different thing and they can't do it. <laughs> it, it it's, it's everywhere, man. It's like, and like I said, I think it's like the biggest thing because I can think about myself. It's like a lot of guys just don't let it go yet. 
I can still play. I still want to do this. And like, like you said, they have to shift, turn that switch on and turn right. the other one off and say, no, this is what I'm doing now. Because if your heart ain't in it and your focus isn't into it, it's just not going to put out the good product. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it is, it's kind of, because the ego of gets in the way. Wow. Well, this guy is not as good as what I was doing there. It's like, Oh no, you're the coach now, man. That's not what it's about. Right. Like, right. Easily deter it. Yeah. The last point I want to make is, um, basically about ego, uh, and taking your ego out of it when you're a coach and being open to learning from other coaches, other athletes and your community. If you go into a session and you're like, and this is a different thing from authority. If you go into a session like, this is how it's done. It's my way or the highway. You can all shut the fuck up. This is what we're going to do. And you're not open to anybody's suggestions, ideas, anything like that. It's not going to work out well for you. That's just pure ego. Um, you have to be approachable, malleable, open to suggestion, open to ideas. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of people who have a lot of experience in the gym that may be aware of something that you're not aware of or may have an idea for, for, for doing something better. Maybe there's a squat variation that works better for them. Let's say they find, found for them that low bar back squat is better than high bar back squat. And you're like, well, no, we're doing high bar back squat today. It's like, well, I found that for my body, like anatomically low bar back squat works better. Tough shit, we're doing high bar back squat today. That's not gonna work. Like you have to be, like I said, you have to be approachable and you have to be able to change things and to be open to new ideas and new concepts. Um, it doesn't matter how long you've been a coach. It doesn't matter what you've read or who taught you or like who your gurus were. There's always new ideas. There's always new concepts. Um, there is no dogma or my way as the highway type mm. mentality with this stuff. I'm still learning. All my coaches are still learning. We'll never stop learning. Um, you know, I've known people over the years that know this is how it should be done. It should be done this way. And then, you know, you kind of get sucked in like, oh, all right, okay, great. But then you learn down the line, well, that person said this and that doesn't really make sense anymore because you learn something new. Um, so never think you've got it all figured out and that you know everything and that, um, you know, your way of doing things is the right way. Um, be open, you know, learn, grow, um, seek out new education, seek out new mentors, um, be vulnerable, be, um, be suggestible. Um, don't let that, that doesn't mean you should be less authoritative or um, that you should lose command. It just means you're, you're reasonable. <laughs> yeah, it just means you're taking the, e you're not letting the, e your ego get in the way of coaching your class. Um, and I've, you know, I've, I've seen that a lot over the years. Um, sometimes coaches like the spotlight, the spotlights on them. Like, it's kind of like, this is my, <laughs> this is my chance to shine kind of thing. Um, and it can sometimes, unfortunately leave them closed off to, to other people's, uh, ideas and suggestions. So yeah, stay, stay open and stay, um, stay willing, stay willing to, to, to change things into to mix it up if you need to, or to um, learn a new, uh, a new variation or a new movement pattern or uh, a new tool. It's like, I remember when kettlebells first came out and some people were like, well, kettlebells don't do anything. And like other people are like, well, kettlebells are the most functional exercise. And other people are like, I only use kettlebells. And some people are like, well, kettlebells are only good for door stops. And it's kind of like, <laughs> you know, you get this like, and the same thing was with, you know, the, the relationship between bodybuilding and CrossFit. It was kind of like bodybuilders didn't do CrossFit and CrossFit, CrossFitters didn't do bodybuilding. And one was functional and one wasn't functional. And one was for aesthetics and one was for performance. And you had this like back and forth. And then look at it now. It's kind of like, well, a lot of like CrossFitters add bodybuilding stuff into their routines. A lot of bodybuilders add like CrossFit type stuff into their routines because mm -hmm. there are benefits to both. Because once everyone took the ego out of it and realized that they could learn from the other sport, um, you know, everyone gets a lot better results and has, has a lot better time <laughs> training. Completely. It's a scarcity mindset where you're just like, no, there is a way that you can do something successful because it's your favorite routine or your favorite style of training and have people come to you because it's your favorite. It doesn't have to be the end all be all. Yeah. You're open, relatable, and let people be malleable what they want to do and how they want to 
be on their fitness journey, yeah. it's going to be a smooth sailing. Yeah. No, no, it's not always going to be smooth sailing. I can't, don't, don't say that. <laughs> Uh, okay, guys, that kind of wraps it up. Uh, I do just want to bring up, so we do do a coaching uh, prep course at uh, Ferris Athletic Club. It's been in-house to this point. We've just been offering it to our, to our coaches here. It's been our way to kind of like improve our coaching staff, help our coaching staff, um, bring in new coaches. Uh, but we are going to start uh, opening up to the, the general public in the near future. So if you are interested, reach out to us, email us or uh, DM us whatever's easiest for you. Um, all this stuff kind of comes up with, with, of course, you know, learning about uh, different training systems, different energy systems, um, different, uh, we have three pillars here, mechanics, strength, conditioning, different uh, teaching points in each different um, section uh, of, of, of that, of mechanics, strength, conditioning, you know, how we teach certain things, how we teach certain movements, why we do it the way that we do it. Um, and putting everything together and how to how to become you know the best coach possible so if you're out there and you're looking for education and you're looking to be a better coach and and you want to like connect with us then uh, don't be afraid to to reach out um apart from that guys uh thank you brandon for coming in i appreciate it no i might take you guys up on the coaching thing man you should any chance to get better at life itself communicating with people understanding them you totally should and um yeah, I hope you guys are all okay out there and having a, a getting back into fitness. Um, it's great to see so many people back in the gym. You know, some some people who are coming out now I haven't seen for a year, and slowly they're trickling back in, and it's so good to see their faces. Um, I feel like the smiles and laughter is coming back to, to the club, which is which is so good to see. Um, people are people are kind of like I can see people relaxing a little bit more and being a lot more comfortable in the environment. So that's great to see. So. Whenever you're ready, guys, we are here for you. Um, and yeah, we would love to help you uh, continue down this, this fitness path. Um, we are at 1316 Glendale Boulevard. You can follow us at Farris Echo Park. And uh, we will be back with you real soon. Take care, guys. Thank you, Brandon. Cheers. Cheers.